composite figures and area, we're at 10.3a. We've got seven previous videos for Chapter 10 that are linked in the description if you need them. A composite figure is made up of simple shapes like triangles, rectangles, trapezoids, and circles. And to find the area of a composite figure, we find the areas of the simple shapes and then use the area addition postulate. We learned about that in 10.1b. The area addition postulate says the area of a region is equal to the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. We can also estimate the areas of irregular shapes by using composite figures. We can find the areas of composite composite figures by adding and rounding to the nearest tenth. So we have this yellow shape here and the first thing we do is divide the figure into simpler shapes as two rectangles. It's telling us that this side is 21 centimeters and this side is 12 centimeters. This base down here is 27 centimeters and the top is 15. Well we can find this 9 centimeter length if it's not given because if we know this is 12, we can subtract it from the 21 and get the 9. So we know this side is made up of a 12 and a 9. So for the area of the top rectangle, we do area equals base times height. We have 15 times 12. That's going to give us 180 centimeters squared. For the bottom rectangle, we've got 27 times 9, which gives us 243 centimeters squared. For the area of the entire composite figure, we add the 180 plus 243, and we get 423 centimeters squared. The word composite comes from the word compose, which means to form by putting together. A composite photo was made from the combination of two or more photos to make one image. So if you've ever horsed around in Photoshop or with art, and you've tried to put a part of one image onto the part of a completely different image, you can blend this better in Photoshop and make it look like the orangutan really has that woman's eyes. And you can blend this skin tone to make it look more realistic. But that's a composite photo. Now take a look at this diagram. The first thing we do is divide this figure into simpler parts. So we have a triangle, a rectangle, and a semicircle, or you can call it a half circle. The base of the triangle is the square root of 10.2 squared minus 4.8 squared. How did I get that? Well, using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that if this, before we use the Pythagorean theorem, I should say, we know from here to here is 7.8 that was given. We know this is 3. So we can do 7.8 minus the 3 and get this 4.8. Now we can do this a squared plus b squared equals c squared because that's our hypotenuse. That would be the c squared, wouldn't it? So we have 4.8 8 squared plus b squared equals 10.2 squared. We subtract 4.8 from both sides and we get b squared is equal to 10.2 squared minus 4.8 squared. See? We remove the two exponent by putting a radical around this side. That's how I got that. Well, 10.2 squared is 104.04 and 4.8 squared is 23.04. We do the subtraction and we get an 81 and the square root of 81 is 9. So now we know this is a 9. This green line is a 9. So is that one. It's the same. And if that's a 9, the radius of this circle is half that, so it's 4.5 feet. We find the area of the triangle using the formula area equals half base height, and we get half times 9 times 4.8. That gives us 21.6 feet squared. The area of this rectangle is 9 times 3, that's 27 feet squared. And the area of the half circle is half pi r squared. We know the radius is 4.5 now because it's half of that 9. 4.5 squared is 20.25, so we have half times that 20.25, which gets us 10.125 times pi. We add these totals of these areas up and we get 21.6 plus 27 plus that 10.125 times 3.14 is pi. 
We multiply these together and we get 31.808. We add 48.6 to it and because we're not using the symbol for pi, which takes the place of all the digits of pi, it represents all the digits of pi, and we're using 3.14 as an estimation, our answer is an approximation of 80.4 feet squared. So know that you can find area with composite figures by adding. Here we would have three half circles and a triangle. If this is 5, then we know the radius is 2.5, right? And if this is 10, we know this point right here is a 5, which means that radius is a 2.5. For this one, we do the area of a trapezoid and then the area of a rectangle, and we add them together. We can also find the area of composite figures by using subtraction. We would look at this figure as just a big rectangle. We'd find the area of the whole rectangle by doing the area equals base times height, so we'd have 36 times 18, and that would give us 648 meters squared. We can see the M, we know it's meters. Now we find the area of the triangle that's missing. If this is 36 meters, then the top must be 36 meters, and it gave us that this area right here, this point right here, is 9 meters, this segment, okay? So we do area equals half base height, so we're going to do half 36 times 9, which gives us 162 meters squared. Now, we subtract that 162 from the entire rectangle of 648, and we get 40, 486 meters squared for the orange area. And look at this diagram. It looks like a rectangle with a half circle missing here and a half circle missing here. It's telling us that this entire length is 33 feet and its height is 16 feet. And we know if that's 16 feet, then the radius must be 8 feet because it's half of that, isn't it? And the area of the rectangle, area equals base times height, would be 33 times 16. That gives us 528 feet squared. The two half circles actually make one whole circle. So we could find the area of one whole circle and subtract it from that rectangle. And we use area equals pi r squared. We know the radius is 8, so we have 8 squared, so we have 64 pi feet squared. When we multiply the 64 times 3.14 as pi, again, we're not using the symbol that represents all the digits of pi, so we're going to have to start using an approximation symbol because we're only approximating it with 3.14. We get 201.06. We subtract it from that 528, and we get... 326.9 feet squared. It's rounded to the nearest tenth. So, if you have a circle within a circle, and you know the radius of the smaller circle is 2, and this distance is a 1, we know the radius for the entire pink circle would be a 3. We can find the area of the entire pink circle and white circle together, then find the area of this white one and subtract it from the bigger one to find out just the area of the pink part. See? And if you look at this one, we've got this little cutout right here. Well, if this is a 2 and this is a 2, that must be a 2. And then if that's a 2 and that's a 2, it's the same thing as this. So we can almost imagine taking this little piece and putting it here where that piece was missing. and. If this is a 6 and that's a 2, that means this side is an 8 in its entirety. We have 6 plus that little 2 piece that would come down here, see? So the area of this would just be 6 times 8. And for this one, we would find the area of the entire blue parallelogram and then find the area for the white triangle and subtract the area of the white triangle from that parallelogram and that would be the blue area, okay? So subtraction can help us. Emma is planning a xeriscape garden. And xeriscape gardens reduce or eliminate the need for supplemental water from irrigation. If her garden will need 17 gallons of water per square foot per year, how much will her garden need in one year? How much water will she need? So the first thing we need to do is find the area of the garden in square feet because it's 
telling us we need to know what 17 gallons per square foot is. So we've got all these dimensions here. We can see the top one is 28.5 feet. This side is 19.5 feet. The bottom is 12. This little piece is 6. It doesn't give that diagonal, but it does tell us this is 10.5 here, and that's 7.5. So we divide the garden into simpler parts. We make a rectangle, we make a trapezoid, and another rectangle. Then, using some common sense, if this side is 19.5 feet, and that's 7.5, and that's 6, we can add the 7.5 and 6 together. That'll give us 13.5, and we could subtract it from this entire side, and that'll tell us that this little piece right here is 6. Not the diagonal. It would be this little piece here on this side, okay? The one parallel to that side. And 28.5, if we subtract this 10.5 right here, that'll tell us that this piece here is an 18. That helps us with the dimensions of the trapezoid. So the area of the top rectangle, area equals base times height, We've got 28.5 times 7.5, which gives us 213.75 feet squared. The area of the center trapezoid, that's equal to half times base sub 1 plus base sub 2 times the height. So that's half times 12 plus 18. So if this down here is a 12, we know this other green line is a 12, don't we? So we've got 12 plus 18 times half times this 6, the height. That's going to give us 90 feet squared. And the area of the bottom rectangle is just 6 times 12. That's 72. So we add the 213.75 plus 90 plus the 72, and we get 375.75 feet squared. But we're not done. It wanted us to find out 17 gallons per square foot. So now we know that's how many square feet there are. We multiply that by the 17, and we get 6,387.75 gallons of water per year. That wasn't really that difficult. It was just very long and drawn out, okay? So I don't think it was hard. It was just took a while to do with all the little steps, okay? To estimate the area of an irregular shape, we can sometimes use a composite figure. So when we look at this, we can see there's some curves, right? See the curves? On a grid paper, we can draw a composite figure that approximates this shape, and we measure one square on the grid so we know what the measures are. So instead of the curves, I drew a straight line because we're only doing an estimate. And you can see that split some of these squares into diagonals, didn't it? Now we have triangle, which is going to be A. We have a parallelogram, that's going to be B. We have a trapezoid, that's going to be C. And we have another triangle, that's going to be D. And I measured this, and if each square is one centimeter by one centimeter, we know it's one centimeter square. And for the area of the triangle, which is half base height, our base would be one, two, three centimeters and the height would be one centimeter. So we do half times three times one, which is half times three, which is 1.5 centimeters squared for the green triangle. For the parallelogram, we need to do area equals base height. Our base is one, two, three, and our height is one. So that area is three centimeters squared. For our blue trapezoid, we need to do base one pl plus base two first. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, we need to multiply that by a half and then multiply it by its height of 1. So we've got half times 5 times 1 is half times 5. That's 2.5 centimeters squared. And then for our triangle down here, we can use the top part as the base. We've got a 2 and a height of 1. So the triangle area formula is half base height. So we have half 2 times 1, which is half times 2, which equals 1 centimeter squared. Now, to find the total area of this composite figure, we just add the 1.5, the 3, the 2.5, and that 1, and we get 8 centimeters squared. 
but we were just estimating, weren't we? So, the area is about 8 centimeters squared. That's just an estimate, because we didn't do exactly inside the curves, did we? Our next lesson is going to be triangle area formulas, 10.3b. That's the second part of this lesson. Then we're going to get into 10.4 and talk about perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. Then we're going to do 10.5 and talk about effects of changing dimensions proportionally. I hope I explained this well enough so you were able to follow along. If you had any trouble, maybe you can try going back and watching the video again. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you for the next part of this lesson. Bye.